Hello, Internet, and welcome to another episode of Experimental Cataclysm, the show where we talk about recent changes to the experimental version of Cataclysm Dark Days Ahead. So first up today, hey, I made a video about Diablo 3, and I know, I know, you don't care. Uh, you're here for information around Cataclysm, and that's great. Thank you for showing up. But I did make this video talking about the release of Diablo 3 and how it stacks up in 2022. I really enjoyed making this video, you know, doing something different and new, and my hope is that you would check it out. Now, it is highly edited so it's not some long boring let's play and yeah just uh you know it's got like one percent of the views that i get on a lot of my other content and i'm just gonna keep plugging my other stuff here but anyway let's get on to cataclysm first up today we are now officially in feature freeze we discussed a little bit of what that means in the last episode and i'll link to the post down in the description below if you want to read it over so we are officially in feature freeze and although this does not mean that development is going to stop it does mean that we're moving in that direction or rather, you know, not that development ever stops, but that means we're moving towards a freeze of new additions until the stable gets resolved. Last time this happened, it took several months. I know that Kevin is a very busy lad, as are various other members of the dev team, so there's no firm time frame, and we're going to have to just see how it all shakes out. Anyway, on to the new stuff. First up today from Zombiezilla, we've got an autoclave appliance. Now, appliances have been continuing to develop. I just have not been shouting them out like I used to, and, you know, they've been appearing over time. But I wanted to mention the autoclave specifically because it, you know, well, it never really made sense that we were wiring this into our car. I'm sure that it's possible, obviously, you know, why wouldn't it be? But an autoclave is a huge piece of equipment that's very much designed to exist inside of a building. So now we have the ability to keep them in a static base and use them in the way that they are intended to be used. Not much to say about this, really. It's just a very sensible change that I wanted to mention. There's no need anymore to make room for a 70 liter pressure vessel in your car. Next up today from Irk, we've got something pretty spoilery. I'm not going to put anything on the screen for this, so just enjoy looking at my, you know, unicorn heraldry or whatever. This PR added some stuff for our Lord and Savior, Dino Dave. And if you don't know who Dino Dave is, you should probably be ashamed of yourself. This change will add a sort of final resolution to Dino Dave's story, and honestly, it's a nice touch. I like it as the end of those interactions. Anyway, there'll be a link to this PR in the description down below if you don't care about spoilers and you want to check it out. It's just that, you know, I don't know, Dino Dave and Food Person are the two sort of like mascot NPCs for the game, I think, so it just felt wrong to go into detail about it. So we're just going to move on here. Next up, we've got a few changes regarding your hidden health stat in the game. This started, I guess, with an issue from Irk pointing out that the health system is pretty busted. And he's absolutely right. Health has been out of whack for as long as I've been playing the game. Aspects of it really don't make sense, and the range of health effects on food items had no consistency to them. But anyway, this thing is an issue. It's not actually a change to the game. Irk outlined some proposed changes to help fix up the health system, and honestly, a lot of them are well thought out. The gist of it all is that the idea of the health system is a good idea, but the implementation is not so good, and they kind of want to fix that. But anyway, there'll be a link in the description. It's a long post, so you can read through the proposed ideas if you are interested. However, what we will talk about are the changes that came following this, and both of these came from Frizz. So first up, we had sleep depth deprivation now negatively impacting your health. This is part of what was proposed in the issue, the idea being that if you live well and you make good, healthy choices for your character, then great. But if you make a lot of bad choices, they will impact your character. So for instance, getting enough sleep would be living well, but depriving your character of sleep would be bad for your health. And that's what this first PR does. It made it so that sleep deprivation will negatively impact your health. Now apparently this was something that was supposed to be happening for a long time, but no one had ever actually turned it on. So yeah, you are going to want to, in the future, get a good night's sleep. Now initially, I was worried about this because it was a negative effect added to your health, but the positive benefits of a good night's sleep had not yet been added to the game. Now, we've talked about this before, how I feel that changes should be made in a certain order to keep them from disrupting the game. In other words, I think that you should not add a negative impact to sleep deprivation until you've also added the positive health impact of sleeping well. But that's also likely something that's going to appear here very soon, so I'm not that concerned about it. It just seems odd to me that you would look at sleep and you would plan to add both a buff and a debuff based on the amount of sleep you get, but then you would only merge the negative debuff and you didn't actually add the positive buff yet. But anyway, I know a lot of you just heard like, oh, it's a health penalty, I'll just drink a lot of pine needle tea and completely ignore this system, but guess what? 
No, you won't. That's the next change we're going to talk about. This PR, also from Frizz, changed the health of all foods in the game to be bound as either zero or negative one. This means that you will no longer be able to consume foods for a positive health boost. Did anyone else just feel that? I feel like I just felt the shuddering scream of a thousand min-maxers who can no longer chug pine needle tea to avoid the game mechanic that is your health stat. And we're going to touch on this again here in a moment. Now, the issue from Irk also had multiple PRs listed at the bottom, most of them coming from Frizz, and although these negative systems have been merged, the positive systems have not. But again, Frizz has already opened multiple PRs to add these new mechanisms. So in the future, getting a good night's sleep will improve your health, which will balance out the negative health impact of getting sleep deprived. In the future as well, getting your daily recommended vitamin count will also provide you with a daily boost to your health stat. And this, of course, will help balance out the fact that foods no longer have a positive boost to health. Now, this seems to be a pivot from our previous very gamey, min-maxy and confusing health system to something more akin to a proper measurement of how your character lives their life. So yes, those of you who spend all day chugging cooking oil for calories and ignoring what your character actually needs will be punished using the new system. Yes, those of you who never sleep and just chug atomic coffee will not get the benefits of a good night's sleep. Those of you who ignore your character's needs and pump them full of drugs to keep them happy will not enjoy this new system and frankly that's how it should be. I know that some of you will be angry about this. I don't even know if I explained it properly. And honestly, that anger is misplaced. People will be angry because they can no longer ignore core game mechanics. And honestly, I cannot muster any sympathy for you. This is a much needed change to a pretty broken system. And not only does it improve the very gamey old system, but it makes health much less variable. If you consistently live well and treat your character well, then you will consistently receive health rewards, which is how it is in real life. So anyway, I don't have a lot of thoughts on these changes changes at the moment. It's clear that it's still being developed and not all of these changes are in the game yet, but there is obvious movement here and it mostly seems positive. And if you're completely honest with yourself, those of you who've played the game for a while, you know that the health system has always been nonsense. I'm happy to see it being reworked into something less gamey and more sensible. My only real concern about this rework is that it's coming right as we've reached feature freeze. The definition for what is a feature is pretty loose as we said before, but a major rework to how a system system works seems like something that's a little dangerous to be started right as we're coming up on a stable release. So we'll have to see how all of this shapes up. I'm a little worried that it will not be fully balanced for 0.G. Anyway, other than that, I think I've made my thoughts pretty well known, so we're just going to move on here. Next up this week, we've got several tweaks to different weapons in the game. Three of these are from Aaron and address multiple weapons, and then one is from Rand Denner, which affected both staffs, and we'll talk about all of this separately. So looking here first at Aaron's change I'm not going to cover all of this in detail. I will link to the PRs in the description down below. First of all, it changed the damage values of hatchets and brought them up to date to use our current two-hit formula. Basically, back in the day, we would manually assign a bonus or penalty to the two-hit value, but now we have a system that determines you know, what that value should be. And then another PR buffed the damage to cleavers and multiple kitchen knives. And then finally, the third PR added some techniques to the longsword. Now, I mention this not because I have thoughts on any particular aspect of these changes, but because there have been multiple changes to weapons lately. Many of these have changed the value of weapons in the game and what the natural progression for most players is. We've already had changes to the staff weapons and the cudgels previously, we've had changes that I just mentioned, and we've had a couple more that we're going to talk about later in the episode. So I highly recommend giving these weapons a second glance to reevaluate whether or not they're worth your time. I know that people really liked the hatchets previously, for example, but now they've had their damage nerfs, so it's worth re-looking at them and deciding if it's a good weapon moving forward. They've also had their two hit value increase, which will help to balance out some of that DPS loss. So you're going to need to decide if the hatchet is still a valuable weapon to you or not. But anyway, let's move on and talk about the change that was made to the bow staff. This one came from Rand Denner and gives the bow staff the rapid strike technique. Now this PR is fine. It's really straightforward. It just gave the bow staff the technique and tweaks the recipe. There's really not much more to say about it than that. And actually, I guess I'm not 
going to say more than that. I was going to rant about the previous nerfs to staffs. I was going to complain about how they were poorly justified, and in my opinion, there are people who are just seeking to tear them down without a good reason. In my opinion, the rapid strike ability is core to the identity of staffs in the game, and the fact that the bow didn't have it to begin with was kind of nonsense. Now, I'm happy to see this change, and I will spare you rehashing my arguments. We've talked about it multiple times previously about why staffs have been done dirty by the dev team. So anyway, let's just forget all of that and move on to another weapon-related change. This is from Terminator, and it adds the Brutal Strike technique to the baseball bats, as well as enabling them to be held in certain belt loops. This basically means that the equipped item must have a belt loop to hold this item, and the pocket has to be large enough to accommodate a baseball bat. I don't have anything to say about this. Brutal Strike seems like it does fit with a baseball bat, and the baseball bat really never had any techniques except for some moderate block ability. Next up today, we've got some tweaks to vehicle bats batteries from, uh, I'm just going to call you bait if that's okay. Now this changed quite a lot about the batteries and honestly a lot of it is numbers which is not super easy to parse. There will be a link to the PR in the description down below and in that PR there is a link to a Google document. Now this document explains the different values and the math that went into determining what should be changed about the different batteries. However, most of that doesn't really matter from a player perspective. You don't need to know the math or drain rates or things like that. Most of you don't care about that information. So what information actually matters to the player? Well, for starters, the batteries have had their sizes and weights adjusted. Most of them have been made larger and heavier. The naming convention has also changed. Large storage batteries are now extra large storage batteries, and the previously named storage batteries are now considered the large storage batteries. This was just to clarify their names, so it's a little bit more obvious how the progression actually works with their size and capacities. The recipes for crafting and deconstruction have also changed. The ratio between each stage of battery is slightly different now. In other words, if you wanted to make a large storage battery out of medium storage batteries, that would be a slightly different recipe now than it was previously. Now, like I said, there's a fair bit of change in this PR, and most of them are not a big deal really in terms of gameplay. You can still do all of the things that you could previously with a storage battery. It's just been slightly tweaked. I may have missed something of consequence in this PR, but I really don't think it's going to have very much of an impact on your game. Next up from Bombastic Slacks, we've got a visual cone that will change as you aim your weapon. What this means is that when you begin aiming at a target, whether it's a real target or just a spot on the ground, your vision will cone in that direction. You will still have a radius around your character where you can see what's going on, but your vision will focus towards your target. The longer that you aim, the more your vision will narrow. And you can instantly drop this feature by pressing the comma key while aiming. This will reduce your aim to zero and clear the vision limitation. So now, Cataclysm in general is not really built to use vision cones. Everything in the game sees in a radius around them. There's no directional facing. And I've always sort of wished that we had that directional facing, but I don't know what that would look like in this game. And that's still true. This is just while aiming. It does not change anything else about the game or how enemies will perceive the player. And you might think like, oh, my vision narrows, so this might allow enemies to sneak up behind me while I'm aiming. But no, that probably will never happen. Even while aiming, your character gets to see a pretty enormous area around them slash behind them. Aiming in this game probably takes like maybe four seconds at the most and most enemies will never be able to make it close enough to you and melee attack you in that amount of time. It is possible that an enemy with a ranged attack could possibly damage you from outside of this vision radius. However, the reduced radius is still in my opinion way too large and that probably will not happen very regularly. So in my opinion, this is a mostly cosmetic change, and honestly, it looks really good, I like it a lot. But in terms of mechanics, I don't see this being much of an issue for most players. And this is especially true because moving or dropping your aim in any way instantly restores your perfect vision of the things around you. Now I am hopeful that this might mean something for other effects like this in the future, but at the moment this is a very limited scope. It's probably not going to impact your game very much, and even for new players it's probably not going to be an issue. I mean, or maybe I'm wrong. I don't know, maybe this would be a hindrance to new players or something like that. To me though, I just view this as a fancy cosmetic effect, and honestly I, I really do like it. I think you will probably like it as well, but it just won't have that much impact on your game. 
Next up from Davy DeGain, we've got an audit of spawns to tire changing equipment. Now I don't have much to say about this, it seems like this person did a fair amount of research. For starters, they polled people about the contents of their trunk and they also looked at a study from AAA. And that study was about uh, how many uh, sold vehicles have spare tires, things like that. Now I'm not going to bore you by going over a bunch of item groups, so I'll just say that this is a pretty massive buff to these sort of items. If you go to pretty much any town in the game and start searching searching vehicles, you will find a lot more jacks, lug wrenches, and spare tires than you would have a couple of weeks ago. And honestly, this feels a lot more natural and realistic compared to the intense scarcity of these parts previously. So way back when I first started playing this game, there were hardly any items that actually spawned. There was a ton of scarcity in the game for no real reason. And over the last three years or so, we have slowly moved towards things being more plentiful, using more realistic numbers on the amount of items that spawn. But jacks and other vehicle equipment really lagged behind in this regard. Even when we had hubs and the wheel fastening quality added to the game, those items were pretty difficult to find. Now this PR jives with realism, it fits the rate of spawn on other items and it's something that I've personally been annoyed by for a long time. This is an item that exists in many, many vehicles in real life, so there's no scarcity there from a realism perspective. And from the perspective of other people looting the world around us, there's really not a lot of reason for a survivor to steal a whole bunch of jacks and take them back to their base. So as far as I'm concerned, there was never really an explanation for why these items were so rare. Anyway, I like this change, I'm glad to see this get buffed. And I guess that's probably it for the video. I was going to talk about, uh, basically there was a hot air balloon style child zombie that got added to the game. And honestly, I think they are terrible and the PR even acknowledged that these started as a joke, so I do not understand why they were added to the game. But I already complained about them on Discord and got rebuked about it, so I probably would just end up rambling and being irritated. So yeah, everyone, thank you so much for watching the video. Hopefully I helped inform you about development and blah blah etc. Now I'll be back in a couple of weeks with another video, uh, although remember, we are of course uh, heading into the freezes for the stable release, so content is definitely going to begin slowing down. Anyway, thank you for watching, hopefully you enjoyed the video, and I'll see you next time.